Perfect. Today we are talking about seed technology. You know, a seed is a very, very important thing. And so you don't just take seeds and then go and plant. No, 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 no. This thing has to be developed so that it grows in any environment. I'm here with William from Bayer. William, thanks for joining us. Thank you. So William, let's start off now. How can farmers or small-scale farmers get access to new seed technology? Um, at Bayer, we produce seeds. So we produce hybrid seeds. So these are the seeds that, are, that has a building technology in them. So how farmers access these seeds, we work with, we have partners, we work with KNSA and Agri Department of Agriculture Extension Officers to educate the farmers as well about the seed that they're going to use because our seeds, are, they have a building technology called, so we call them BT Roundup Seed that we sell mostly in the Pope East and Cape in So these seeds, we have a way of planting them. For example, when you plant a BT Roundup Seed, you also need to, be able to plant the refuge seed. This refuge seed is a small peg of seed that comes with the BT Roundup seed for you to protect the technology of the seed because our seeds are made in such a way that they survive on the environment against certain diseases. So we bring them to the farmers. We have, uh, we're working with uh, the stores like NTK, VKB in Limpopo. We've got distributors in KZN, Eastern Cape, Lesesa Farming. We've got Toyando Farm City and the likes that are selling the seed to the farmers. So from time to time, we plant the same seed with them and educate them about the same seed they, they use. A lot of people will complain that, hey, seeds are expensive. Aye, man, why, why must I pay this amount of money for such a small bag of seeds? But then again, they don't understand the process that it takes for that seed to be what it is. Isn't that correct? Yes, that is correct. And at, at Bayer, we recognize that. That is why we, for us, with the education that we give to the farmers, it's for us to justify to them to say, okay, the value of the product. We are selling value more than anything at Bayer. So that is why for us, we, we, when, when we talk about it with, with farmers about the price, we look at the, let's look at the value more than the price. So the benefit that you get out of what you have invested on. And then again, if you, don't, if you have good quality seeds, obviously your yields will increase. That's, that's correct, that's correct. When you've got the good quality seed and you're doing the, you are following the proper ways of planting the seed, because we, you might have a good seed and not plant it in a proper manner. So you need to make sure that you, test the soil and get everything required and planned in time to maximize on the, on, the, on the productivity. So I'm here with Reggie from Panar and we're going to be talking about cost implication of seed technology. Why is seed development important for the farming industry? Um, it's maybe the most important thing to get to is to understand what's in the seed. When we sell seed, when we breed seed, what is the aim behind it? It's the technology that we want to give to farmers that improves their yields or that better that that uh, makes their uh, working much better. The first thing that we would look for is obviously what farmers would be asking: the yield potential in that seed. It's what we sell to the farmer to say: if all is done right, this is the yield potential that is within that seed. We also look at the prolificacy, which is in line with the yield potential so if a farmer manages properly it advances his production we look at uh, its growth maturity different areas require different growth maturity so that is what we provide to the farmer to say if you are in such and such an area this is the better growth maturity that you could be looking for this is that's the seed that can provide with it over and above that we have a uh, biotech that is within the seed where we have uh, insect resistant hybrids We've, had, we've, got, we've got glyphosate resistant hybrids. So those are things that we sell to farmers. So if you look at the breeding program over the years, it's something that used to take up to 15 years, but through biotechnology, it's shortened to as close as four years. So that's the technology that we sell to the farmer to, in, to try and improve or to better their situation. Thus, we encourage farmers always to look for new seeds, new varieties that we bring to them because it's the technology that will enhance their production. Now, let's talk about the cost implication of implementing new seed technology on your farm. I mean, everything costs money, right? Basically, um, the cheaper the seed, know that the results will be just as good as its price. So, normally farmers would complain about high cost of seed. The seed is indeed expensive if you look at it that way, but the benefits are greater. 
So if you invest yourself on, on, on price seed that has all the technology that you require, then you are on the right track. So you, a farmer needs to weigh his options, to weigh his strengths and see if I can afford it, then I need to move with it. Rather, if you can't afford it, buy something that is similar that you can grow from there. But in a sense, you have to pay for the seed. So it's important, make the right choice. When you choose a hybrid, you'll be on the right track. So SACTA is a non-profit organization that administers um, the statutory levies on certain open pollinated crops. These open pollinated crops are special in the sense that the grain you harvest from them can be used as seed in the following season. What's important as well is that it's not all grain, it's only these open pollinated crops. And currently we have a statutory levy on soybeans, wheat, oats, barley and lupins. Because of that, and because it's legal to actually keep some of your grain back to use as seed, seed companies are not investing a lot of money in breeding new varieties. So over time, on these, some of these open pollinated crops, our yields and productivity have stagnated in South Africa. So SACTA came into being so that for every ton of grain of these crops that gets delivered, a certain portion is, is taken from that, comes back to SACTA. There's a whole calculation that's done on the seed companies' market shares, and then that pool is divided up back to those seed companies, and this funding then supports their breeding activities. If we look at soybeans, for example, which is one of the big crops where we collect a levy on, we've seen since the inception of SACTA nearly 100 new varieties coming to the market in South Africa. The farmers now have a much wider choice of varieties. Those varieties have newer technologies in them as well. And they're suited for different parts of the country where they will achieve then the best productivity. So Davi, I'm a farmer and I wanna start implementing newer and better seeds um, on my farm. So what is the process when I visit you guys? Now, I think what's important to say is that you know seeds is like your other inputs uh, or fertilizer and pesticides. We do it on a production load, mm. so that means you have to pay that back at the end of the harvest. So it's a it's a very short term, less than one year. So that's how we finance seed and and seed technology for farmer specific uh, on a on an input loan or a production loan. What's also important to mention is that we have a product in FMB, it's called a PPC, mm. a pre-plant contract, where we don't take land as security, but we take your crop as, a, as the collateral farm. Mm. And we, we finance you on that crop and that forecasted crop. Uh, we also link that to insurance policy, because you know just to, just to uh, mitigate your risk as farmer, but also for the bank. So we include the insurance product, uh, and we assist you with pricing that on suffix uh, or at, the, at, at other markets to assist the farmer in that way. Especially for guys that don't have the land as the security uh, in the background. We take a session over the crop. Mm. Obviously there's certain uh, requirements that you have to comply with. You need to send in uh, emergence reports. So you must show that the, the maize is actually coming up. Mm. Uh, but this, the, the guys that are doing the insurance assist you with that. And then midway, you know, you, you send a progress report and then after the harvest, you know, we, we settle the account. Let's say now I went to you guys, everything went smoothly. I got the loan, I started planting and then halfway through, hail hits or something. You know, you know what the weather's doing now. So what then? So that's where the insurance part is very important, specifically for hail. Uh, well, we actually take multi peril hail, flood, drought, everything. Uh, then the insurance pay out. The farmer can either replant if he's if he's still in time, mm. but his risk is managed, but the bank's risk is also managed. We also have uh, the fancy words is force me here, mm. you know, act of God, uh, and that's built into that, specifically to protect the farmer and the bank. Now, speaking of the actual levy, I know people are going to ask, what are you guys using that money for? So the way I try and explain it always is for every hundred rand of levy that we collect for a particular crop, we have to pay a two and a half percent or two rand fifty back to the collector. Then what's left, 20% of that 
goes into transformation. So in transformation, we are funding um, developing farmers and sector likes to support farmers that are right on the edge of becoming commercial. But the, our main effort is providing production loans and we want to help them get over that threshold and become commercial farmers. Then sector's own costs, they come out at about three rand, three rand fifty out of the hundred rand. And the balance, which is about, then about 75 rand, gets divided up amongst the seed companies based on their market share and how well they've performed. So if it's a seed company that gets put into their breeding program, they can test more varieties or they can breed for resistance to a particular disease or whatever. The technology companies can invest in newer technologies that will then come to the market at a later stage. There's a misconception about GMOs. I mean, yeah. even I had a, a misconception saying, hey, I'm gonna eat all these chemicals that you people are spraying. But what exactly are G GMOs? The, the first GMOs that came out were insect resistant technology. So that relied on a protein that was derived from a bacterium that was toxic to certain caterpillars. Before GMOs came around, they were farmers were using this bacterium and spraying it on their crops, and they still do today as well, to control certain caterpillar insects. So the GMO piece comes in now, scientists, largely at Monsanto, they were able to extract the, the gene that produces this protein and include this gene in the crop plant. So the plant grows, it's producing that protein, the insect comes and nibbles on the plant, ingests the protein, which kills the insect. The cool thing about this technology is that protein is not toxic to humans. It's not toxic to mammals, any warm-blooded animals. It's not toxic to We eat a Bt maize that might have a little bit of this Bt protein in it. We just digest it like we do a steak. It doesn't affect us at all. Now, a lot of farmers have challenges when it comes to um, new seed technology. What do I mean by that? A lot of farmers struggle in terms of having knowledge on biotech traded seeds. They also don't know about the integrated pest management of these seeds and also the responsible use of these seeds. And another thing is that if they don't have knowledge of all these things, therefore they're not going to be exposed to the benefits that these new seeds can give them. Which is why we've partnered up with CropLife and they are going to bring down their information to farm level by fair too. If you guys want more information about seed technology or seed development, please visit CropLife's website. It's on the screen, Buffet. To do yourself a favor, man, just go there and explore. There is so much to learn in agriculture. Once again, thank you for coming through to I'm a Farmer. See you again on the next one. Bye.